All right, what's going on, guys? It's round number three of the Comic Book University League Challenge. On your left, we have Jacob uh, Arkanoff playing uh, Mega Sizzler Garbodor, just like we saw in the last round with Aaron Tarbell. And on the right, we have Brian Miller playing Mega Mewtwo, specifically the Psychic Infinity one. Um, and Brian is going first. Uh, Jacob got a mulligan earlier, which is important to note. And Jacob starts with a Kabalion, which is actually really, really cool. I'll talk about what Kabalion does in a minute. Uh, but Brian right now, he's going to Ultra Ball away a Shrine of Memories and a, uh, a Psychic Infinity Mega Mewtwo, which is really, really painful in my opinion uh, for discard turn one. But he's going to probably grab a Hoopa. Yep, and he's going to grab a Hoopa for three Shadow Shot Mewtwo's. Now, Shadow Shot Mewtwo is really, really cool. Um, for one Psychic Energy, it's attack. Shadow Shot does 30 times the amount of Psychic attached to this Pokemon, like Psychic Energy. And at second attack, damage exchange for two Psychic and a Colorless, uh, you basically swap damage counters with the active Pokemon. So, like, for example, say if the active has... If you have, like, 80 on you and the, uh, your... The defending Pokemon has like 120, you swap it so that way you have 120 and they have 80. That was like a bad example, but that's basically what uh, damage change does. It's really, really cool. I like it a lot. And Brian's going to be playing an N here. Uh, and meanwhile, Jacob starts with Kabalion. And Kabalion's really, really good. It has the attack quick guard, which prevents all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. Uh, the only downside is you can't use Quick Guard next turn, which is okay. Um, it's also a clutch late game attacker with Revenge Blast. I actually played Jacob round three in this tournament. Or no, round two, my bad. This is round three. Uh, round two, I played Jacob, and I was playing Volcanion. I, I actually uh, I lost to him because I wasn't able to take out his Garbodor, um, which was something that was kind of interesting to see. Anyways, though... I believe after the Spirit Link and uh, Psychic, Brian's going to pass. Uh, we see Jacob go for a Trainer's Mail, I believe, for that Ultra Ball. And he's going to Ultra Ball away his Garbodor allied. He realizes that the Garbodor is not really effective in this matchup, which is fair. I mean, in all honesty. And this is actually why I like the Hex version more. Because other Garbodor decks, you're playing more pieces um, with Garbodor than you are with Hex. Which means... Uh, less cards would be would be dead in this matchup. However, though, since he is playing the Garbodor version, it appears that he is going to have to throw away a little bit more resources than what he likes, or a little bit more of uh, Jacob's resources are dead. Uh, but he Ultra Balls, and he grabs, I believe, Scizor as he benches it, and is going to attach a Metal to it. He also has a Floatstone in his hand, I believe, and a Spirit Link. And we see a pass. So I think his, I think, uh, I think Jacob's hand is just a metal and a float stone. We see Brian draw because I'm pretty sure Jacob had a really good hand and he just got end of the garbage. Uh, we see Brian go for a mega evolution here, and it looks like it, he may be playing the Shrine of Memories here, and he is. He's gonna play Shrine of Memories, uh, and then he's gonna discard his hand. So Shrine of Memories, what it allows him to do is for every Pokemon in play, they're allowed to use the Previous evolutions attacks under them, assuming they have the necessary energy, which is really, really cool. We see Brian go for a Trainer's Mail here, as he, we see a Verse Seeker, a Mega Turbo, a Sycamore, and I didn't see the fourth card uh, in his in his uh, Trainer's Mail there. He definitely has plenty of targets that he could grab. Um, the question is, what target is he going to grab? That's the big question. He's going to grab a Versus Seeker. As we see Brian shuffle up here. And he also has the Mega and the Active. Uh, so he could potentially apply pressure this turn with a uh, another Psychic Energy. Uh, if he gets a Double Colorless here, he would be in the driver's seat, theoretically. Uh, we see a Floatstone on the Hoopa and a Psychic Energy attachment, which is okay. Um, could be a little better. And he's going to go for a Psychic Infinity for a solid 50 damage. Uh, because it's, a, it's like... It does 10 plus 30 for each energy attached to both actives. And then Kabalion has a uh, psychic resistance. That's why it's only 50 damage as opposed to 70. Uh, Jacob counts to see how many cards are in his opponent's hand. And he's going to just Mega Evolve. Attach a Metal. Uh, so he, he top decked the Mega is what it looks like here. And he's going to Free Retreat. And he's going to hit him with an Iron Crusher. 
Iron Crusher does 120 damage, and what it allows, uh, and he can either discard a special energy or a stadium off his opponent's uh, board. So you can either discard the special or special energy off the active, or he could discard the stadium that's in play. Either or. In that case, he's going to discard the Shrine of Memories because he can't get a, a target off the special energy. Otherwise, he would probably want to discard that instead. And we see Brian's thinking. And what's also good about discarding the stadium is now he can't damage change that energy or that damage off of his Mega Mewtwo. So he can't heal it heal it effectively, um, which is really, really important. Uh, we see Brian, he's going through his discard. He's seeing how many Shrine of Memories he has gone, probably, and a couple other resources, I imagine. He has a DCE Lysander in hand, so he can apply pressure and take out that Kabalion, um, potentially, if he wants to. He's got the DCE, obviously, which is really important. He's debating on where he wants to attach it. I, if I were him, I would actually bench it or drop it on a bench Mewtwo. Um, just build up another Mega Mewtwo. And it, yeah, it looks like that's what he's going to do. He hasn't fully let go of it yet. Yes, that's what he's going to do. And he's got a Mega Turbo versus Seeker Mega Mewtwo in his hand. He's got a couple of options. But I think he's just, oh, okay, he's going for the retreat here. Sending in the Hoopa, playing it a little conservatively uh, so he could save that Mega Mewtwo and not get knocked out. As we see a Mega Evolution in the past here, um, whenever he Mega Evolves, he obviously ends his turn. And Jacob is in top deck mode. He, we see him drop a Metal on the Cabalion, and he's just going to go for an Iron Crusher for 120. As Brian top decks a Psychic Energy, you can attach that Psychic. Ooh, he can also Mega Turbo. Ooh, this is going to be a great play for Brian. He's going to be able to... Uh, Mega Turbo, attach a Psychic, and uh, he can do a lot of damage with Psychic Infinity. I think it's doing uh, 170 after resistance, if I if my math is correct. And we see him go for a Verse Seeker, probably for an end here. Oh, okay, it looks like he's going for a Sycamore to be a little aggro, discarding, I believe, his third Mega, as well as a Lysander and a Psychic Energy. Um... Personally, I actually would probably have just mega it again. Um, I know that sounds insane. Then again, Brian knows more about his deck than I do, obviously, because it's his deck. Uh, but I feel like a mega evolution there would have been fine because you're not really losing anything uh, too major in just mega evolving and then sacking off your um, your Hoopa for prizes because you can end your opponent later. But he's going to go for an Ultra Ball, discarding Parallel City and an N. And he's going to fail the search, it looks like. So, yeah, Brian's list is, is pretty standard. I actually don't think he plays um, Garbodor, which is going to be interesting. Uh, he plays the version of Mega Mewtwo that I would probably play, which is uh, more of a hexy version. Um, and we see him go for a Shaman here. He's going to draw a couple cards. He looks like he drew four. And we see a Hex... And a Wobbuffet in his hand. Wobbuffet's really, really clutch as a uh, 90x attacker in this deck. Not a whole lot of people recognize Wobbuffet because people think it's slow. But its, it's ability is really good if you start with it. Not to mention that you can Hoopa still and uh, not slow yourself down really a whole lot. Um, but we see Brian. He's going to free retreat and attach another DCE to his Mega Mewtwo. And he looks like he's going to be doing enough for a knockout i believe that's enough or it, it may live by 10 hp uh 30 60 90 120 150 180 210 resisted by psychic he's gonna go for 190 damage is what it looks like oh my bad 200 he lives by 10 and oh my god jacob top deck to skyla that's gonna be pretty big that's gonna net him a supporter for next turn so that way he actually could get something going but it looks like he's going for a crushing hammer, and I do not agree with this play. Oh, okay, maybe he's just seeing what he has. He could, he could get up maybe an escape rope here to like you know preserve his mega scissor. But I feel like the play is to just do the one twenty, get a supporter for next turn, and then set yourself up next turn um, by building up a scissor and stalling with Kabalian potentially. But, oh, God, what is he going to do here? I, f 
he cannot go for the ultra ball here. I feel like he cannot. He can't afford it. I don't think he'll have two turns in order to ultra ball for his resources. We see him eyeing some stuff. He sees a he sees a shaman that he's eyeing. But yes, he's going to go for the proper play. In my opinion, he's going to Skyla for that Professor Sycamore so he can net himself seven fresh cards next turn. And I, I think he's just going to immediately attack here. That's probably his play. He could either sack off the Kabalion or he could sack off Mega Scizor. And it looks like he's going to go for the proper play. Do 120, discard that DCE. And what is Brian going to do now? Brian is forced to Psychic Infinity here. He can't even damage change if he gets to the stadium because he's going to take more damage that way. Um, he could, I guess, Shatter Shot to be cute. Um, for the views. Oh, but he drops the Shrine. I don't agree with this because he doesn't really need the Shrine of Memories. Honestly. He's going to go for a Mega Turbo. Probably attaching to the Benched Mega Mewtwo. But he could attach it. Yeah. Okay, so he's going to attach it to the Benched Mega Mewtwo. Just so we can have energy on that one. So he has two different Mewtwo's. And he's going to Sycamore. I believe he discards... He discards two... Oh, no. He discards a Verse Seeker, a Hex, and a Wobbuffet. And it's actually funny. A couple weeks ago, I traded Brian some of the stuff he needed for Mega Mewtwo. Because he needed some of the stuff really badly. He was like, this is, this is what I want to play. I know it's expensive. Get stuff off of me. <laughs> it was really funny. But anyways, though, he's going to go for another Mega Turbo here. I believe that's his third Mega Turbo, so I don't think he's going to be able... Or I don't think we're going to see any more after this. And he's going to attach, I believe, manually. So he has three Psychic on a Mega Mewtwo on the bench and a DCE and a Psychic on the active. So he is, he is prepared. He is setting up for two different Mega Mewtwo's here. And we see Jacob, he's going to count his resources, see what he's played. It's important to note, uh, Jacob does play hammers in his build, which is can be crucial um, with the help of uh, Iron Crusher, or with the help of the effect of Iron Crusher. Oh, but God, Jacob top decks a Shaman, so he can set up for five and then also Sycamore afterwards, which is going to be big. Now, here is the big question, is what does, what does Jacob do? He's ha He has a Parallel City in his hand, and a Sycamore. What else can he do here? It looks like he's going to Parallel himself to three, and I don't agree with this. I personally think it should be better for him to Parallel his opponent. But, he's going to Parallel himself to three bench. I don't know if I like that. Um, he's going to Shaman again for two cards. He hits... I believe that was double hammers. Or it may have been one in the Ultra Ball. He's going to go for a Crushing Hammer here. And... It's a Heads. What is he? What is he discard here? And it's actually funny. I, I gave Jacob that coin. Um, because he was a new player. He didn't have any, like, randomizer. So I was like, here, bud. Here's a couple of coins that you can use. Which is actually kind of funny. Just a little background knowledge you guys may or may not care about. <laughs> Um, Jacob, I think, is still thinking on which energy to discard. Personally, I discard one of the Psychics off the bench, Mega Mewtwo. Um, because you can easily discard the, uh, DC off the active if you could get a Mega Scizor play. Or if he plays E-Hammer. I don't remember if he plays E-Hammer or not. Um, or a Flare Ground or something like that, even. Um, or he can discard the Psychic off the active, too. Either or is a good play, in my opinion. You should not discard the DCE, is what I'm trying to say. I think he's calculating, like, what, what, what can I, what mathematically is the best for me? He's going to discard a Psychic off the bench one. I personally like that play a little better than the active, but I could be wrong. Um, he's going to Ultra Ball away, Spirit Link, and a Verse Seeker here. Ouch, a little hurtful. A little hurtful on these uh, discards for our Ultra Balls today, aren't we? He's going to grab himself a Scizor, and that's his third and final bench Pokemon. He can no longer bench anything else. Um... I guess the other two cards in his hand must be really important since he did a discard a Spirit Link. And he discards a Mega Scizor. See, he could have discarded the Mega Scizor off the Ultra Ball and then attached the, the, um, the Spirit Link. So that could have been a play he could have done instead. 
Ooh, Jabe's gonna go for a Revenge Blast, and I believe that's doing 90, because I think it's 30 plus 30. Yeah, 30 plus, 30 plus 30 for each prize card your opponent has taken, so I believe he's gonna take two prizes with Kabali in here. And just like that, the game is back in a, uh, a prize race, assuming he does this, which is actually pretty solid. And yep, he's going to knock out the Mega Mewtwo, taking two prizes. And on to Brian's turn. He sends in the Hoopa. And he top decks, I believe, a Sycamore. Yep. He's got a Hex, a Trainer's Mail in his hand. He's going to play the Trainer's Mail. He's going to Trainer's Mail, find a couple Ultra Balls. He's going to grab one of the Ultra Balls. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I guess it thins out the deck. Maybe he's looking for a certain out that he needs. Like, I don't know, Verse Seeker or something. He offers the cut, obviously. And then I think the best play for Brian is just if he has a Lysander, the Lysander potentially. Um, or actually, no, I don't even think you want a Lysander here. I think you'd want to take out the active just because it is a one prize non EX attacker that can swing for multiple or high amounts of damage. And it swings even higher amounts of damage if you knock out other things that isn't. The Cabalion, obviously. So, Brian looks like he's gonna bench something else. Potentially a Wobbuffet, maybe a Shaman. Oh, never mind. We see him attach a Psychic on a benched Mewtwo with a Spirit Lake. I don't know if I like that play because I believe, unless he has a Super Rod or something, he can't recover the third Mega Mewtwo he discarded. He's gonna go for a Verse Seeker here, going for an N, and he's gonna end both himself and Jacob to four. So this got a little interesting. I believe what's going to happen here is Brian is going to end both of them to four, and he's going to take a prize here. Um, so he's up in prizes by one. So this will be interesting. I don't think Jacob got really too much of anything to note. We see Brian free retreat here, and it looks like he's just going to attack with Psychic Infinity and knock it out. So there we go. On to Jacob's turn. He's going to send in Shaman, surprisingly. A little interesting. Uh, he's got a couple hammers in it. It looks like he's got one hammer in his hand, which is interesting to note. Uh, he's got Hoopa. Um, he's going to play Hoopa. And he's going to get a Mega Scizor. And I believe that's it. Because he can't get any more bench targets because he paralleled himself to three and not his opponent to three. So that's kind of interesting. We see him offer the cut. He's going to go for a crushing hammer here. He's trying to use the coin, but he's like, you know what? I'm going to use die. He gets the tails. That's why we use coins, bro. <laughs> um... And it looks like he has a Trubbish, Mega, or Escape Rope and something else in his hand. But we see him just Mega Pass. And on the Brian's turn, Brian could potentially put himself down to one prize here if he has the DCE. Uh, which it looks like he, he does. But he's going to go for a Trainer's Mail here. And he hits a Floatstone if he wants that. And he just hit a bunch of energy afterwards. I believe he's going to take the Floatstone just so he can... Uh, he could attach it to Shaman saying, hey, even if you try to Lysander me here, I'm going to be able to have a free or an out to my uh, Shaman being stuck in the active. And I think the smart play is to just, okay, he goes for the Hex here. Um, I don't know how big that's going to be. And we see him drop a DCE and a Mega Turbo. Uh-oh, this is big. He's going all in with this one Mewtwo. And he's going to Psychic Infinity. If he had a Shrine of Memories there, that would secure him the game probably because he would have a fully healed Mega Mewtwo. And we see Jacob draw and it looks like he doesn't have anything. And oh, I believe that's the game. Yep. Okay. It looks like Jacob conceded there. He just kept on dead drawing whenever it was kind of important. Um, obviously, they, oh, they, so I think they both have the same sleeve. They had to figure out which, whose parallel that was. But I believe that's the game, so that's going to do it 
um, for this coverage in Elite Challenges. I'm sorry I wasn't able to get rounds four and five up. Uh, round four actually would have featured me versus another Mega Scizor. Um, and it's Volcanium versus Mega Scizor. It was kind of a, a weird scenario that happened. I wish I did record that game um, because it, there's a funny judge ruling that happened. Um, which was kind of cute. And then I believe round five uh, was the final round of the tournament. And I believe we had um, Mega Mewtwo versus Mega Gardevoir, which would have been an interesting matchup as well. Um, but I don't really know. Anyways, though, that's going to take it uh, from here, guys. Thank you all for watching uh, this League Challenge coverage. Hopefully, I'll give you guys more, uh, more of a... Uh, more coverage of videos and more deck profiles uh, in the future. Uh, but that's all the time I have for today. Thank you all for watching, and uh, stay delicious, and cheers.